Hey folks, this is Mr. Chicken, and uh, this video is going to be about uh, using model magic clay, uh, which is a Crayola air dry clay, to make uh, some prop heads for your characters. Um, when I had my own yard haunt, uh, this is what I was using to make the heads of my witches and my grave digger, um, and uh, I found that uh, it really offers a lot for um, being able to make some heads very inexpensively and easily. Um, because it's an air dry clay, you don't need to worry about molding and casting, which can be expensive and time consuming um, when you really just want one head uh, for your show. Now, um, the problem with this clay is that uh, if you've ever used it, you've probably found that it can be a little tricky to work with. It's got this kind of rubbery quality to it where you can't really, uh, you know, try to use your nice sculpting tools and, and uh, refine it very easily. Uh, instead, it's more about sort of picking the right shape and mushing it into the sculpture. Um, and the other major problem with the air dry clays in general, I think, is that um, what makes it able to dry out on its own is that it's water-based. Um, and so what that means is that part of the volume of the clay is water. And as that water evaporates, the clay is going to shrink. So if you take a foam head and you use that as your base and you sculpt with the clay on that, what's going to happen is that the clay needs to shrink and that foam head inside is not. So as the clay is shrinking, the only thing it can do is to crack and split. Um, this was the problem that I experienced on the first head that I made with the Model Magic, um, which is this green witch head. Um, and uh, from that, I sort of thought about it and realized that if you could um, not force the clay around another shape, and if you could let the clay dry out evenly from the inside and the outside, then you give it the best chance of success without cracking and splitting. So um, what we're going to be doing is uh, using a head form to act as sort of an initial armature, but then we're going to remove the sculpture from that foam head and let it dry out as a hollow clay sculpture. And what that means is that the clay can dry out from the inside and the outside at the same time. And uh, as a result, you're not fighting against it. You're just letting it do its thing. Um, and uh, it usually works out pretty well this way. So let's uh, dive right into it and uh, see how it goes. Now, uh, you're going to need a head form to sort of act as your armature. Um, but if you're going to use a foam head, you want to get rid of uh, most of the facial features because what we don't want to do is to build right up on top of the features of the foam head because first of all that's probably not um, the proportions that we want for a character that we're creating and second uh, those foam heads aren't really the right proportions for anything ever so uh, especially if you've got one of those female heads that looks like an alien all you want out of that is uh, something to fill up space inside of the head so we're going to wrap the head in tin foil, and uh, then we'll be able to pull out our model magic clay. Now you see I've got some reference pictures here of uh, a head that's going to be my inspiration. Um, and I thought it would be helpful to just mark out uh, some of the general uh, features and where they'll end up before I got started, just to kind of wrap my head around what I was going to be doing. And the tin foil here is giving us both something for the clay to grab onto, and uh, also it's going to make it very easy to remove that clay from the head form inside uh, when we're ready. 
So uh, what I'm starting out with is I'm just putting down a layer of clay over pretty much the whole face. Um, it's going to be a lot easier to go from here if we've got uh, that layer down for the rest of the clay to stick to. It's going to create a structure. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and start adding the actual features. Now, because of the rubberiness of this clay, what you really want to try to do is to put down the features in pretty much their final form. Um, there's other uh, nicer clays uh, that you can really kind of tool and rake and gouge into um, after you've applied it. Um, but that doesn't work with this. You kind of just have to put down the amount that you want and then mush it into shape, um, which is what you'll see me doing as we do this. Um, you can use water to uh, help smooth things out, but you want to be very careful not to use too much water um, because, as we discussed, the water is uh, creating volume that needs to evaporate out, which makes it shrink. So the more water you use, the more it's actually going to shrink later on. Um, but at the same time, you want that water sometimes towards the end to help smooth things together. So you can see I'm uh, using a lot of sort of large noodles of clay to create the eyes and the mouth shapes. Um, and then uh, eventually I'll end up kind of blending those in a little bit uh, around the edges. But um, you can see I'm leaving myself extra and tearing it off so that I have that control to get it just how I want it. And then once those large features are down, those sort of landmark parts, um, then I can go in uh, with uh, more bits of clay, um, trying to cover the whole feature in one pass. Um, and I'm adding in sort of the cheekbone area there, the chin, um, and the uh, sides of the mouth. Um, and, uh, you know, you just sort of do the best you can to get it right on the first try, and then you just sort of push it around into shape. Um, keeping in mind that where two pieces of clay join, you're never really going to, uh, lose that seam. So, um, as much as you can try to put those seams where you want the wrinkles to be, um, and that way... Uh, you'll sort of disguise them. Um, that is, if you're going to be painting this as it is, which is mostly how I did uh, all of my heads. A um, little ball for the nose, and you can see I'm using a little water to help that stick uh, because it was starting to dry out a little bit. Um, and uh, just keep squishing it around um, until you feel happy with where it's going. So this is a little while later, um, and there's certain things that you just have to sort of let go, um, where you'll realize that, uh, you know, there's a part that's not your favorite, but if you keep trying to work at it, it's not going to get any better, and you just have to let it be. Now, uh, where we're at here is the head has sat out for about a day um, to dry, and it's dry on the outside. Uh, but the inside is still very wet. Um, so you can kind of touch it and it feels dry, but your finger dents into it. That's about where we want to be. Now, if your character is bald, um, or you think you're going to see the back of the head, then I would have covered the whole head with model magic. Um, and in that case, um, in order to get the airflow that we need on the inside, what I'll do is just split the whole thing with a blade right down the middle, um, let the two halves dry out, and then we'll glue them back together when they're stable enough to do so. Um, but since this is just the front and we're going to be constructing the back separately, um, we can just pull it off and remove the tin foil from the inside. You'll see that there are already cracks developing in the surface, um, and that's just kind of how it goes. Um, but what we're going to be trying to do with this um, is minimizing those from this point. So 
Um, I'm going to put the head into a little cradle, just, just some towels uh, in a little box uh, so that we don't distort the shape while it's drying out, and then leave it to continue drying through. So hopefully by drying both the front and the back together, we dry it out evenly. Um, I'm going to be making the back of the head out of plaster bandages, uh, which is a pretty easy way to go. I've done it, uh, as I said before, with a full model magic head, um, and I've done it with paper mache, but I happen to have a roll of plaster bandage that I'd like to get rid of. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, build up on that same head form um, with uh, about three layers of bandage, um, and then hot glue the face onto there once it's uh, stable enough to do that. And then I just used a little uh, Great Stuff expanding foam to attach a PVC pipe into the inside to act as the neck, which gives me a way to mount it um, to a prop or stake it in the ground or whatever. Um, now you'll see I've also put in eyeballs and teeth. Um, I keep a collection of different eyes and the teeth are made out of plumber's epoxy. Pretty much all of the model magic character heads that I did for my yard haunt were just painted straight onto the model magic. Um, what I would do is a layer of house paint um, before it dried out too much to hopefully try to seal off some of the cracking before it got a chance to get too bad. Um, and then acrylics on top of that. Um, today I'm doing it all with um, my paper towels and house paint technique. Um, I think it's going to add a lot of character to this particular piece. Um, and uh, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail on it because I've done it in a number of videos uh, at this point. But um, the real thing about this um, that I really appreciate is that it's giving me a lot of free detail when it comes to the paint job. Um, that all the little texture and the wrinkles uh, is a lot finer detail than I would ever be able to get from the Model Magic clay itself. So by really making the most out of the paper towels, um, I'm getting some extra stuff that uh, just sort of does its own thing and uh, gives me something really cool. And then I'm going to be painting this head uh, once that paper towel layer is dry, um, the same way I've painted uh, all the other heads and masks that you've seen me do. Um, I'm doing uh, a dark color in the low lights. Uh, I started in this case with the inside of the mouth and the eyes because it seemed like it would be harder to get to after my base coat was down. And then uh, after my base coat, I'm doing some shadows and some highlights with dry brushing, um, and then going in and adding a little more pop uh, to some of those, some of those details, um, and uh, then some finer things like the eyes, and the teeth will get their own special colors. Um, and uh, if you want to see more about this, you can look at uh, my corpsing videos, uh, where I go into a lot more detail about my process for the painting. Um, I'm sealing this with polycrylic, as I often seem to do. Um, and at this time, what I'm using is a gloss acrylic medium for the eyes and the teeth. Uh, a little fur fabric glued down for the hair. And that's about it. Um, you can, of course, take it further if you want to. Um, but I hope you'll see this is a very versatile and inexpensive way to make some prop heads for your characters for your haunt. Um, and uh, if you come up with some other tricks or you have some questions um, about things that I'm doing, uh, let me know. And uh, you can, of course, get in contact with me through my site, chickenprops.com, uh, where you'll also find some pretty cool uh, Halloween props and special effects.